All right, so I'm going to be preparing uh, these parts for assembly. So I'm going to get them out of their plastic bags and recycle them. A few, um, I, mean, I think it was two or three episode, uh, videos back, I was showing off an uh, issue of fine scale modelers. As a matter of fact, I think it's around here somewhere. Uh, yeah, here it goes. Here we go. And if I'm not mistaken... Oh, good. <clears throat> In this article here, someone was uh, re um, talking about uh, containers. Uh, let me see if I could find the actual... There we go. Baby food containers. If you have a baby at home, get Gerber baby food and save the containers. They're a perfect size for small parts or sub-assemblies. The top closed securely and you can see what's inside. If you don't have babies, buy the applesauce. It's just regular applesauce, it's good and it keeps... And, it, and you get to keep the containers. No. I'm not a big fan of apple sauce. I like apple, and I like apple juice, but not the sauce. Now, <clears throat> containers are easy to get, especially since everybody's seen here, seen me uh, have some Chinese food, or the containers of, my, of Chinese food. Another one was this leftover container that had some fruit on it, and once, uh, you know, once we finished it, I used it as a, you know, one of my trays. Another tray, which... I think came from some sort of, I can't remember where this came from, but this little container right here is perfect to store smaller parts so that way I don't lose them. So it's good to have these around. And then of course you don't have to take like everything out just like this one, I'm going to leave it in the bag because they're not going to be painted but they'll be used when the time comes. Fine Scale Modeler has been one of those cool magazines that I've been purchasing every now and then. It's a great refresher. You learn some new tricks and techniques that you never kn knew about. You don't have to buy the most expensive um, products just so it looks good. You know, hobby model building can be an expensive um, hobby. But it doesn't have to be expensive. It could be, you know, relatively cheap. As long as you know what you're looking for. I'm hoping that maybe sometime in the beginning of calendar year 2013, I can then... I want to do a follow-up on my um, tools that I like to use and techniques for building Gundam. I had a video a long time ago that people are still watching it to this day. I was like, why are you watching that video? But... I like to do a uh, revised version. Looking at these blue parts here, I'm kind of running into a slight dilemma. The blue uh, paint that I have, which is this one, doesn't seem to be the right shade of blue that I ever wanted. As a matter of fact, let's um, shake this up a bit and see this. See, it's a nice blue. I'm not, I'm not knocking it. I just don't think it is appropriate for this kit. Take a small little sample here, using a toothpick. And as you can see, it's a nice blue, which may be appropriate for this. Um, but I want to show you guys something. While I was preparing for this, and I did mention before that the possibility that maybe I don't have enough red, I decided to go to F and M Hobbies, who uh, who they sell, of course, uh, guns, um, Mr. Hobby paint, and um, 
<clears throat> I thought maybe I can find not only um, another bottle of red and maybe another bottle of navy blue or a proper navy blue for this. I'll get to the red in a moment. However, he didn't have he had navy blue. As a matter of fact, here it is. Uh, I decided to do it lacquer. Don't want to use acrylic. But even though it says here navy blue, it doesn't seem to be the navy blue I'm looking for. Considering that when I look at this, I thought, wait a minute, that's not navy blue. And the cap, it's, even though it's not black, hopefully you guys see, the, see it in this color. As a matter of fact, let me see this. This is black, but this is not. I'm going to shake it up a bit and show you. And it's, I think it's a little bit of navy blue, but it's a darker navy blue that I've never seen before. To give you an example of what this looked like, I took a little um, disposable brush and I painted this hilt on one of the um, on one of my kits, and it has a shade of blue, but it's so I don't know, I can't tell. I may want to do what I just did right now. As you can see, it looks black, but like a charcoalish black. And this one looks like blue. I'm gonna let you guys decide this. Decide whether I should go with the uh, Mr. Hobby, Mr. Color, excuse me, one uh, number fourteen navy blue, which I'm going on the fact that may I'm going based on the fact that maybe during the airbrushing phase the blue will show up or shine out pretty well maybe I have to mix it up a bit more or should I use Tamiya's X4 Consider there's not that much parts to use I have enough blue you guys tell me what should I do uh, okay as you see here all my red parts are in a little round tray all my charcoal parts are in my square tray. I have a sm the smaller tray. I have a um, very limited amount of blue and yellow. Um, I still have the white parts. Um, I have another tray, but I haven't looked. Um, I said, let me leave that there because I don't think I'm going to need to do anything with that yet. But I'll get to it in a moment. So right now, I'm going to go into the process of sanding down the, the scratches so it's nice and flush using um, this uh, one four this 400 grit uh, one 400 this 400 grit sanding stick and I want to keep it in line so that way I don't make some mistakes here and there This will pretty much take up a better better part of the day or two, depending on how how much time I have to work on this. I'm hoping that the weather doesn't get too cold for me to um, airbrush this kit. Now, I decided to I wanted to review the red part again. Um, I did mention before that I was thinking of using this guy. But putting it side by side, you think that's a wise choice? I know this is kind of like a very, very faded red. And I can probably get away with this if I add a couple of drops of white. This will, of course, maybe bleed it out. Maybe white, maybe a couple of drops of black. 
and and well putting black on this will darken it putting white would lighten it lighten up the pigments as I was reviewing this and I did you know I was also on my way to the hobby store to pick up that navy blue paint and I thought let me get another bottle just in case I'm running out of, you know I don't have enough I looked at the bottle and I think I have enough for everything however I did find the paint that may be a little bit better to try this is called Shine Red. It's a gloss, gloss paint, kind of like the same thing as this. But the paint pigment is a little lighter. I don't know if the camera can see this better. As a matter of fact, let's open it up and get a test sample. Like I did with the navy blue. I take a toothpick. That's an interesting shade of red. It is not as deep as the other red. Yeah. I think I'm definitely, definitely going to use Shine Red on this. Number 79, Shine Red. Alright, so I think I got my paint that I'm going to be using. Right now, I'm going to take the time of cleaning up all these parts. So, as you can see here, this is the beam rifle of the Master Grade Aegis. Already pre-built. Um, thought I thought it'd probably be best to get this out of the way and not have to worry about other parts that I have to worry about. Gun is fully transformable, I guess, for its flight mode and, of course, use during combat. I'm going to keep it like this because I'm going to have it ready for painting before, you know, before anything else. Um, sanded it down in specific areas. The one thing I... I I'm looking at the instructions is you can over here you have a part where you can actually put in um, the sticker the blue st the bluish sticker for that which is actually metallic blue it's basically the same metallic blue that I have put, hold on a second I gotta find it now. Um, yeah this one which I think I'm going to put it on this. I'm also planning on spray painting it a different color, or actually spray painting two colors. My idea would be spray paint the whole thing silver. Once it's dried, I will cover specific parts of the gun with with uh, tape. Um, I'll give you an example, like this part of the barrel, I'll cover it up. This part of the barrel, barrel here and here. The trims that you see over here. Um, there's a trim here and here. There and there. The circle trim here, if I can get to that. The cover over here that that covers the sight, the little notch at the top, and maybe also the frame over here. I'll cover the whole thing with plot with the tape, and then I will spray it over it again with gunmetal. Give it a two-tone color look to it. To give you guys a perfect example of how it may look like. I have a kit here that I've done the same technique in the past. Does anybody remember this? This is the shield for the um, O Gundam, the SDO Gundam, this guy here. And I really like how it came out, the shield, that I thought maybe, you know, one day I'll do the same thing again. So. 
I'm going to try this technique on this gun. 